Hi, my name is Jeffrey Prentice. I'm timpanist with the Orchestra of the Principality of Asturias in Northern Spain. In this short video, I want to present an easy workable method for tucking a casket head and maintaining them on Dresden style timpani. Many timpanists are hesitant to use skin heads not because of the cost, but because of maintaining them and learning how to tuck the calf skin. The best way to overcome this is just to try it and to do it. The most important part of doing a tuck is having the correct tools. Let's take a look at the tools we're going to need to do the job. In front of me I have the tools we're going to need to do the tuck. The most important tool is the tucking tool. My, my favorite is the back of a spoon. Scissors, marking pens, lightweight tape, measuring tape or ruler, Teflon spray, paints, clips, non-abrasive sponge, a file, towel, a leveling tool, and most important, the calfskin head. The highest quality calfskin available right now is exclusively processed through Vellum and Parchment Works in Ireland. Mr. John Katz makes the finest skins for a professional timpanist. We have to realize what sizes we're going to need for each drum. In front of me I have a set of standard drums, 32 inch, 29 inch, 26 inch, 24 inch. A 32 inch drum is approximately 80 centimeters. In order to do the correct lapping of the skin, you should order extra 8 inches on the skin. Thus, a 32 inch drum, you would order a 40 inch skin or 100 centimeters. Likewise for the other ones, an extra 8 inches on the bowl size. That should cover extended collars as well. When ordering a super CAFO skin, we should take into account what thicknesses we should need. For a large drum, I used 0.24 millimeters thickness. The second drum, 74 centimeter drum, I use a 0.22 millimeters thickness. 26 inch drum, or 66 centimeters, 0.21 millimeters. Smallest, 0.20 millimeters as well for a piccolo, 0.20. That's the standard thicknesses used in most of the Northern European orchestras. Now it's time to take off the old skin. Before we take it off, I suggest you mark your rim and the rods so they go back to the same position when we mount the new skin. The rest you know the drill. Taking off the skin. We have two ways. We can cut it off or we can soak it off. I'm just going to cut this off and these skins are good for light snare drum heads, tambourine heads, and the uh, larger skin heads can be used for Baroque drums. Poke a hole, cut it off. I have the skin here prepared for tucking. Now we have to decide how much extra skin we need for the tuck. I have a diagram here that shows us. First we have our hoop, the skin. The skin has to go up, around, and up again. A one centimeter hoop will need a bare minimum of five centimeters extra skin. Here I have a little bit extra I like for lapping. So, I usually would go another two or three centimeters. 
measure the extra skin you'll need. Now we have the skin ready for wetting and mounting. But before we do that, let's clean the lip of the bowl and the rest of the timpani. Apply your Teflon spray. Touch up the paint on your indicator and the gold ornamentation. Smooth off the knife on your clutch to help smoother and quieter movement in and out of the ratchet. Level off your rocker arm to help make fine tuning easier. Now we're gonna wet the skin. We can fold the skin to put it in the shower. The wrinkles will come right out. We'll leave it in lukewarm water for 12 minutes. I have the skin stretched out on the table, the soft side upright, our beating side. You can tell by the emblem of the super kaffel. We're ready for the tuck. Start your first tuck at 6 or 12 o'clock on the hoop. Now go to three and nine o'clock. Use a combination of the tucking tool and your thumb to push the skin up. Next, fold the rest of the skin over the hoop. From here, start tucking from one side to the other, just as you would tensioning a drum.
quick tip, make sure you cut your fingernails because your fingernails can scratch the skin and you'll see those scratches after it dries. After the initial tuck, redo it again, trying to get out the excess water and the wrinkles. Keep lapping the skin little by little and a glucose effect will take place and the skin will stay in its new position. Keep checking for wrinkles. I tuck the head flat without any kind of ball underneath the skin. I think this is the best way to make sure there's no wrinkles in your tuck. Little by little, a glucose effect will take place and the skin will become sticky. In fact, when the skin is dry, it will be stronger than a plastic head on a steel hoop. Make sure your lap doesn't pass over the top part of your hoop. This is where the counter hoop will touch the skin and you want it perfectly flat. When you have the skin tucked, little by little try to dry off the excess water.
Now the skin is ready for mounting on the drum. Look for the backbone. Think of where you'll be playing. The best spot usually is a little bit off center from the backbone. I'll choose this spot. It looks very good, the skin here. Here's our backbone. This will be my beating spot. Center the hoop on the bowl. Get rid of excess water. Carefully place the counter hoop on the skin. Now the timpani skin is ready to dry. Place the drum in a cool dark place for 48 hours. To make it easier for tensioning the new head or removing an old head, put a block or support under the spider to help raise it up a bit. Place the pedal at a low pitch setting, tension the rods until the head is snug. Reset the head one last time before tensioning. And for today, tension the drum a little bit more until you have a slight pitch. And for today, let the drum sit and we'll retune it again tomorrow. For the next few days, continue tensioning the drum little by little. Also use a leveling device to ensure the counter hoop is level on all sides. You can make one or buy one commercially. Here we are with the final result. The skins have set, they have stretched, the collars have been made. Some fine tuning has been done, the drums are ready for performance. Tucking and mounting your own timpani skins gives you a better understanding of your instrument. I believe understanding the mechanics of your instrument will help us play better and hopefully become better musicians. And being a better musician is ultimately what we all are striving for. Thanks, I'm Jeff Prentice.